On this edition of Food for Life, Chris Keyes continues his conversation with Michael Sarek. A uh, part of uh, our call then as Christians who are trying to pursue the Lord is setting aside time in quiet mm -hmm. that where we can really hear the Lord. He desires to speak yeah. and we can hear his voice and we can hear where he's leading us. It's been said that, you know, a key to having a healthy and mature relationship is communication. And if we're talking about our relationship with the Lord, then that means having a prayer life. But all relationships change and mature and grow. So that means our prayer life is going to change, right, Michael? That's certainly right, Chris. I know it's really um, over the 20 or so years that I've, you know, tried to pray. You know, it's really changed. When I first, you know, when I first started out and was learning how to pray, I followed something fairly structured. You know, I. Uh, um, yeah, I didn't really have anything else to go on. And then gradually over time, you know, I found that the Lord, you know, kind of weaned me off the structure. And, um, and then I had, I had a difficult time where, you know, maybe I wasn't as fervent. And uh, I needed to get back to actually something structured. And that's actually where I'm at right now. In some ways, I've kind of come full circle, or it's a mix of structured and a mix of you know, letting the Holy Spirit uh, lead me. What's, what's been your experience with, with prayer and how it's changed and so on? Well, I can certainly uh, relate to that idea of transformation in prayer, that prayer, prayer changes with time. And about that, this idea of it being a relationship, I know uh, in my youth I met the Lord in a powerful way, and yet I would never say that I was a man of prayer. Okay. You know, I never would have really uh, had a, a steady prayer life. I opened my Bible once in a while and, uh, you know, talked to God maybe about my needs. But as far as really pursuing a relationship with God, no, I would not say I had that in my life. But through circumstances, uh, went through a, a difficult period in my life and was really coming back to the Lord and, and seeking Him and desiring to know him better. And I happened to uh, be at just an introductory talk, and somebody mentioned the miracle hour. Okay. And uh, I thought, you know, the miracle hour, uh, my mother gave me one of those, and it's on my shelf back home somewhere. Now, that's, that's a prayer book, right, where I think it outlines, you know, how to worship. And maybe you tell us a bit about it because That's it's quite right. popular. And the hour is divided into 12 five-minute segments. Okay. And uh, it really covers all of the very basic elements that we need to have present within our lives. Okay. Um, the elements of praise and just worshiping God, coming and freeing ourselves, uh, coming before the Father and just asking for forgiveness, uh, asking for freedom in our lives. Uh, there are points of intercession and just quiet reflection. Um, so it's a very, very, uh, uh, we can say a, it really covers a full spectrum of what we would be seeking to have within our prayer lives. And for me, what happened is that I kind of went home and, well, I found the miracle hour and I began to pray. And, and you were able to do the whole hour? <laughs> well, believe it or not, I was, Chris. Okay, okay. You but went from zero to 60. <laughs> I went from zero to 60. Uh, okay. And miraculously, God had been waiting for me. Okay. He had been waiting for me. And really what began to happen is that uh, I was swept away in prayer. That the, uh, the wonder of coming and meeting the Lord every day and worshiping Him of coming and asking forgiveness for my sins and coming before the Father and acknowledging my relationship with him as, as his son and Jesus as my Lord and my Savior and interceding and just spending quiet time. The Lord really began to do a powerful work within my life. And really, uh, it was a time of transformation within my life, a time of powerful working of God within my life. I remember that uh, I would actually experience the power of God. The presence and power of God would come and meet me in these times of prayer. It was quite a miraculous uh, season within my life. I can actually uh, remember coming home and uh, I 
the Lord kind of nudged me and said, I'd like you to go and visit your neighbors. And I said, I, okay, Lord, I'll go. And they were on their porch beside my home, and I went, and I was just, you know, I don't know why I'm here, Lord, but I'll, mm -hmm. you know, just talk to these good folks. And I could see that the, this woman was actually quite agitated, and finally she she got around to me and she said, what are you doing in that house? <laughs> and I said, what am I doing in that house? You know, I'm thinking, uh, and she says, your house, it's white and glowing. What are you doing in that house? Oh my goodness. And it really was a season where the power and the presence of God would come and meet me each day. And it was a wonderful season, um, but it was also just a season. Okay where the Lord was really trying to draw me into this life, this life of relationship with him. And I can remember actually coming here and listening to a talk one night where Father Charles Orchard, our pastor here, shared on just coming and coming before the Lord without an agenda. Okay. Without an agenda. And so the next day in my morning prayer time I just knelt on the floor and I just came before the Lord and I said Lord I come without an agenda and in the powerful experience that I had uh, Jesus came Jesus came and he took me and, and together we went before the mm -hmm. Father and we worshiped we worshiped the Father now, honestly, I was totally uh, confused and undone, and I couldn't understand what God was trying to do or say. But at least I knew that somehow it was a call to change, that God was calling me to not pursue this structure, but to pursue the relationship. Right. And so within that then, I began to uh, explore the, the rich heritage that our church has given us, began to explore the, the life of the contemplatives, reading uh, St. Teresa of Avila, John of the Cross, and really finding within these teachings the, that same calling of my own heart to know God, to know the Father, to experience his presence and his life and his love. Now, is there anything, anything in those teachings that, that, that you were able to translate into something practical in terms of your prayer life? And, in terms of like, you know, reading about Teresa or John on the Cross, do you have an example of what, how it might have actually changed, um, changed your prayer life? Or was it more just kind of becoming more entrenched in the idea that it is, it is, about, it is about the relationship? It doesn't really, you know, maybe it, it matters less, you know, what we do together. <laughs> it's more that we are together. Or, well, there are elements of all of that, and I can okay. certainly relate to you, Chris, certain elements that I think that all of us as Christians are called to, especially perhaps in our own time. Right. Uh, we can relate to these great teachers, doctors of the church, as I've heard them referred to as spiritual scientists, right. that they have scaled the peaks. Right. And there are many great teachers now within the church who are interpreting and, and bringing out just these rich kernels for mm -hmm. all of us to, yeah. to uh, really use within our own simple lives, our own simple prayer lives. And within my own life, there are certain elements then that I've come to recognize as vital in pursuing uh, a vibrant relationship with the yeah. Lord. And one of the most difficult that I would say in our modern society then is carving out silence. Yeah. Uh, this is a discipline I know uh, as, a, as a male that I could uh, flick through all the channels and have the radio <laughs> on at the same time yeah. and be uh, open to a million distractions. And really uh, part of uh, our call then as Christians who are trying to pursue the Lord is setting aside time in quiet mm -hmm. that where we can really hear the Lord. He desires to speak. Yeah. And we can hear his voice, and we can hear where he's leading us, and we can hear his words really of love and encouragement. And so that's one of the areas that we need to be challenging in our lives, is just learning to turn the radio off and maybe spend a little quiet yeah. time with the Lord. And that involves all areas of our lives. Mm -hmm. I know that personally for myself then, I've worked at 
uh, shutting the radio off in yeah. the car, not always having music on, or not always having this, these distractions going. Just trying to discipline my yeah. heart and my mind and my life to be more attentive to the Lord. Well, that's good advice. Now, what, what would your advice be for people who, who, who are having a real dry time <laughs> in prayer? You know, they've... Um, you know, they've done things like the Miracle Hour, they've had prayer books, they've read this, read that, and yet, you know, their prayer life seems, you know, dry as biscuits or just, it just, it feels like anything, there's like nothing happening. You know, what, what would your advice be to those, to those folks who are kind of hung in, but it just seems like, you know, there's not much happening when they sit down to pray? Not much happening. Well, one of the things we can always count on is that God really is in control. I can remember uh, being so baffled by reading these lives of the spiritual giants, but somehow coming to this realization that God really is in control mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and that God really has a plan and a desire for each of us. Yeah. And so we can enter in in confidence, even in periods of difficulty, of dryness to realizing that God truly is in control, yeah. truly, truly is in control of our lives and of the situations and whether we can feel him or not, yeah. that he really is there and in control. Well, that's a good word, Michael. And why don't we, you know, if I can ask you to just lead us in a prayer for, you know, for folks that, um, that maybe just are discouraged, you know, and they, they're just feeling for whatever reason um, that they're either not worthy of God showing up in their prayer time or at least them perceiving that. And uh, yeah, maybe just need to be encouraged by the Lord and need to be blessed. If, could you lead us in a prayer for that? Yeah, I'd be happy Great. to, Chris. Thanks. Well, Lord, we're just so grateful that you sent your son. You sent your son to give us life, not just life in the hereafter, but life abundant here. And so, Lord, I just pray for every person that's struggling today, every person that feels like you're far away, and maybe even that you don't care, maybe even that you don't even know they're alive. I just ask you, Lord, that you would step in, just as you stepped into my life, to show me that you're there, that you would step into their lives today, Lord God, and just show them how much you love them today. Show them how much you've loved them, even before they were born, that you loved them, Lord. And so we ask you that you would bless your people with this gift of prayer, this gift of just coming and being with you, knowing you and knowing this great love. And we ask this in your name, Lord Jesus. Amen. 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 Thanks, Michael. We invite you to send your prayer request to Food for Life, Box 1107, Station F, Toronto, Ontario, M4Y2T8. That's Food for Life, Box 1107, Station F, Toronto, Ontario, M4Y2T8. On the next edition of Food for Life, Father Terry Donahue looks at, you can't take it with you. So with everything in your life, we need to take an honest look at our possessions, at our plans, even our priorities, with what you own, with what you do, with your time and your money, and examine all of these things in light of your goal. Brothers and sisters, one of the wonderful realities of our God is that He is with us always. The, the term we use for that is we say God is omnipresent. He's present all the time and in all places. And that's why Scripture uh, exhorts us to, to seek His presence, to recognize His presence and delight in His presence because God is good. And again, He's with us always. In, in Psalm 105, the psalmist tells us, seek His presence continually. And this should really be a goal for our life and for every day, 
to seek God's presence. He's with me. He's loving me. The Lord Jesus in Matthew chapter 28, He promises us. He says, I am with you always to the close of the age. The Lord Jesus is with us. He promised to be with us. In Isaiah, the prophet says, Can a woman forget her sucking child that she should have no compassion on the son of her womb? Even these may forget yet I will never forget you. Again, the Lord's promise through Isaiah that even, even if a woman should forget her child, God will never forget us. In John chapter 14, the Lord Jesus says, I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. As a child of God, as a son of God, as a daughter of God, we should never feel orphaned because the Lord does not leave anyone orphaned. He promises to be with us, to come to us. We can ask ourselves, well, if God is with us, if He's close, how close is He? In John chapter 14, the Lord Jesus says, If anyone loves me, he will keep my word and my Father will love him. And we will come to Him and we will make our home with Him. That's how close God, the Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit wants to be with us. To make His home with us, within us. That's why the Lord Jesus in John 15, He, he commands us, He says, Abide in Me and I in you. Again, this presence of the Lord is meant to be an abiding presence. God is so close, He is actually within us. He surrounds us and He's also within us. And that's why, like Paul tells us in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, he says, Do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, which you have from God? Our bodies are a temple of the Holy Spirit, a place for the Holy Spirit to dwell, to live with the Father and the Son, this indwelling uh, trinity. And that's why in Romans and Galatians, uh, Paul speaks about the Spirit of Jesus in our hearts crying, Abba, Father. Again, this indwelling trinity. How long? How long will the Lord be with us, dwelling in it with us, abiding with us? The Lord Jesus in John 14 says, I will pray the Father, and He will give you another counselor. Holy Spirit, to be with you forever. Even the Spirit of truth. That's how long God wants to abide in us, to live in us, to make His home with us, to be with us forever. God wants us to be with Him forever. There's that beautiful passage from the prophet Isaiah, chapter 66. Where the Lord says through Isaiah, Heaven is my throne, and the earth is my footstool. What is the house which you would build for me? And what is the place of my rest? The Lord is looking for a house. He wants us to build him a house, a place to rest. He says, All these things my hands, my hand has made, and so all these things are mine, says the Lord. But this is the man to whom I will look. He that is humble and contrite in spirit and trembles at my word. Now the Lord has the heavens and, the, and the, 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 the whole universe as his throne and his footstool. But his home he wants to be. The humble person who's willing to open his heart to the Lord. Now the presence of the Lord dwelling in us. The presence of the Spirit dwelling in us is something we can actually experience. It's not just a theoretical concept. You see, Scripture says that our God is a consuming fire. And when our God comes and makes His home within us, we feel that fire. We feel the fire of the Holy Spirit burning within us. On the road to Emmaus, 
Two disciples were walking with Jesus and Jesus was with them and he spoke to them. And the disciples commented, Did not our hearts burn within us while he talked to us on the road and while he opened to us the scriptures? Did not our hearts burn within us? That's the Holy Spirit. That's the presence of God within dwelling, burning, a fire of joy, a fire of peace, a fire of love. We can feel that. A warmth in our hearts. So many of the saints and the mystics speak about this interior warmth. Have you experienced that before? Are you experiencing it now? It's the Holy Spirit who loves you, who wants to make his home in your heart forever. Especially as we read Scripture we open our hearts to the indwelling presence of the Lord. You see the Lord Jesus in Luke tw uh, chapter 12. He says, I have come to bring fire on the earth. And how I wish it were already kindled. Again, this fire that the Lord has come to bring on the earth is the fire of God's love and His Spirit burning within us. Do you want that fire? Are you willing to come to terms with your identity as a temple of the Holy Spirit made for God to live in you, to dwell in you, to burn in you with great love and with great peace? This is what the Lord longs for because He loves you. And that's why, you know, St. Paul, he exhorts us. He says in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, he says, Rejoice always. Pray constantly. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. How do we pray always? How do we rejoice always? How do we give thanks in all circumstances? While well, we begin by simply recognizing that He is here. The loving God who made me is here with me. And I respond by acknowledging His presence, by abiding in Him, by loving Him. A person who does this finds joy, enjoys a warmth in her heart, and as Jesus promises, lives forever. The Lord Jesus says, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink His blood, you have no life in you. But he who eats my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me and I in him. There's this promise that I will abide in you and you in me. So brothers and sisters, seek his presence. Seek his presence constantly. Recognize the great love he has for you always. We live such fast paced and frenzied lives. I know I feel like I'm always on the go doing something. Just the other day I was talking to some retired people and they said they're so busy that when they were they just don't know where they found the time to go to work. I know I always feel like I have projects and deadlines to meet. And while it's good to be productive, sometimes we can push ourselves at such a pace that we can really cause damage and, and even end up having some sort of burnout or meltdown. Now, it's good to be productive, and I think of Jesus, who led a very productive kind of ministry. But he knew the importance of coming apart to spend time with his Father in prayer, in solitude. I think of the saying, if we don't take time to come apart, we will come apart. And we need to make sure that we spend time with the Lord. I think part of the problem is that with all that we have to do, we get into a fit of worry and we're bothered about so many things. And I'm reminded of the scripture in Luke chapter 10 where Jesus visits Mary and Martha. And Martha's rushing about and serving and busy and, and Mary is sitting at the feet of Jesus and listening. Well, Martha becomes quite frustrated and she goes to Jesus and says, Lord, I'm doing all the serving. Do you not care? Tell my sister to help. And you know, Jesus, he never gives the answer you expect, but yet he gives an answer that cuts through to a very core truth. 
Sure enough, he does so in this case, and he says, Martha, Martha, you are worried and bothered about so many things, but few are necessary, really only one, and Mary has chosen the better part, and it shall not be taken away from her. And I remember hearing this story still as a kid. I was sitting at Mass and I listened to the Gospel. And I was thinking in my own mind, well, it's really not fair that she's not getting up and helping. And even today as a busy working mom, I think I can use all the help I can get. But, and I know many women can relate to me on that. But you know, Jesus wasn't promoting a poor work ethic. But he was really proclaiming a truth. We need to get our priorities straight. We need to take time out with God in prayer. We need to enter into solitude with Him so that we can recharge and get strengthened so that we can go on and continue His ministry. That's what we need. Sometimes we are so busy, we might go to prayer and we're just so distracted, we're not even focusing on the Lord. Very important to take time apart, focus on God, take that time for solitude so that we can hear His voice. I have a book that I want to offer to you today, and I think it might just help you in this area. It's called In His Zone, and it's by Father Mark Goring, and it, is, it includes seven principles for thriving in solitude. It can help train you up, help get you used to taking that time in solitude. And after a while, you won't want to miss it. If you'd like a copy of In His Zone by Father Mark Goring, please write to us at Food for Life. When you write, ask for the book by Father Mark Goring, In His Zone, and our address is Food for Life, Box 1107, Station F, Toronto, Ontario, M4Y 2T8. When you write, ask for the book by Father Mark Goring, In His Zone. We would like to thank you for your financial support of the Food for Life television ministry. Food for Life is funded only by viewers like yourself. We have no commercial sponsors. Your tax-deductible donations help pay for production of the program, pay the television station for the time that the program is on the air, and pay for the mailing of our monthly newsletter. Thank you again for your support of this Catholic television ministry. For an audio CD or video DVD of today's ministry, we invite you to write to us. When you write, mention the program number 1397 and today's guest, Michael Sarek. Food for Life is a non-profit Catholic charity funded only by donations from viewers. If every viewer gave a loony or a toony each week, all expenses would be met. If you have never donated before, we ask that you make your check payable to Food for Life. And our address is Food for Life, Box 1107, Station F, Toronto, Ontario, M4Y 2T8. You may now make your donation online. Just go to our website at www.foodforlifetvministry.org and follow the link. On the next edition of Food for Life, Father Terry Donahue looks at, you can't take it with you. So with everything in your life, we need to take an honest look at our possessions, at our plans, even our priorities, with what you own, with what you do, with your time and your money, and examine all of these things in light of your goal. We invite you to send your prayer request to Food for Life, Box 1107, Station F, Toronto, Ontario, M4Y 2T8. That's Food for Life, Box 1107, Station F, Toronto, Ontario, M4Y 2T8.